On behalf of my mother, Annette, who was not only my father's um, beloved sweetheart of uh, almost 60 years when he passed away, but even, well, I won't say more than that, but she equally was his partner in a passionate commitment to human rights and justice. And everything good that my father did um, during his years in Congress was inspired by, motivated by, sometimes nudged by um, this beautiful petite woman you see standing here next to me. So I'd like to ask you to please give her a round of applause. I want to say just a very few words because if my father were here, of course, he would be incredibly thrilled to receive this award. He was a huge admirer of Sarah's and of the work she was undertaking with this endowment for Middle East truth. And it's kind of interesting, but the very first words that my father uttered when he first became a candidate for Congress in 1980 in California were taken from Adlai Stevenson, and he said in his opening remarks of his opening speech as a candidate, solutions begin by telling the truth. And that is the work of Emmett. And tonight I would very briefly like to tell you a true story from a very recent trip that I took to Egypt in my capacity as chair of the United States Commission for International Religious Freedom. Because I think it speaks volumes to the issue of the challenges that those of us here tonight face as we struggle to bring the truth about the political and cultural and moral and military situation in the Middle East to the awareness of policymakers in this country. We were meeting with the, uh, a deputy prime minister to President Morsi, one of the individuals reputed to be closest to him, a Salafist who, of course, declined to shake my hand and suggested that he didn't speak English, so he would need to speak through a translator, although, as you'll see as I share my story, he, he spoke English well enough to understand what I was saying. And usually these sorts of encounters are somewhat stilted affairs. You have your talking points and they have their talking points. And there's not a lot of, of sort of tearing down of those artificial walls. But as I sat there, I kind of began to channel the big truth teller in my life, my father, Tom Lantos. And I thought, enough of this. I want to tell this guy something true. So I looked at him and I said, you know, We've been discussing a lot of issues related to religious freedom, but there's a cancer and an illness and a pathology at the heart of your society, which is the profound and pervasive anti-Semitism that characterizes Egypt today. And your president, not too long ago, well, it was recently uncovered, but not too long ago, had said to a group that the Jewish people, the Jews were the descendants of apes and pigs, and that the children and grandchildren of Egyptians needed to be nursed on hatred of the Jews down to the last generation. I then said, and I don't think he had done his homework, because I don't think he knew who I was, but I, and we were pretty close, sitting closer than you and I are. And I said, I'm the Jewish daughter of Holocaust survivors. So when your president said that, he was saying that I am the descendant of apes and pigs. He was saying that your children and grandchildren need to be nursed on hatred of my seven children down to the last generation. This is not the conduct or the verbiage or the behavior of a civilized people. This is barbaric, it is despicable, and as long as such attitudes and such dialogue and such talk is considered permissible among the Egyptian people, you cannot take your place among the civilized nations of the world. I then said, and, and you could hear a pin drop, and as I say, it became pretty obvious he understood because nobody was translating and his face has, had gone white. I then pivoted and I said, let's just engage in a little thought experiment for a moment, if you will. Imagine that Next week at Friday prayers or at some major forum, President Morsi stands up and says to the Egyptian people and to a billion 
Muslims around the world and to the rest of the world, enough, enough. We will not do this anymore. We will no longer slander and attack our cousins, the Jews, for the fact of being Jewish. This is not worthy of us as a nation and as a people and as a religion. And while we may continue to have grave political differences and arguments about many things related to life here in the Middle East, this particular illness has to come to an end. I said, well, you know, it would be a stunning event. And I can assure you that from more or less every corner of the civilized world, deserved plaudits and praise would come in for President Morsi. And he would have the opportunity and the possibility of making a, a profound change in the tenor of discussion and dialogue in your region of the world. Well, when I was sort of done with my uh, comments and really kind of felt like my dad was right there on my shoulder, he rather predictably said, words to the effect of Israel's terrible, Israel's awful, we hate Israel. And we sort of moved on. And, and that seemed to be kind of the end of the experience. But the next day, um, our delegation was meeting with a group of women's rights activists. And I recounted this encounter that we had had to them and carried out my analysis, my prophecy that the day after a President Morsi or any significant leader would do such a thing that it would really have, you know, a, a remarkable effect. And she looked at me with great sadness and she said, yes, but the day after, the day after, he would be assassinated by his own people. And it was a sobering and a powerful and a stiffening reminder of what it is we are up against. And that is why the work of Emmet and Sarah and all of you gathered here tonight to support this extraordinary work is really not important. It is indispensable. It is the sine qua non. It is that without which we will not be able to defend the values, the beliefs, the principles, and the friends that are so near and dear to the future of this country. So we thank you for this award. It will hold a cherished place in our hearts and in our offices. And we salute and commend Sarah and all of you engaged in this important work. Thank you very much.